recording. Okay, welcome to our training. So it was really hard for my grandparents to um, share their feelings and talk about it. And so for my parents, um, they had a really hard time talking about their feelings. And so I get it. I get it. Like, it's not easy to really think about our feelings. So just in, in terms of the recording, today's webinar is how to avoid holiday, holiday overwhelm and how to bring peace on earth. And so we were just talking about how overwhelm actually leads to inaction. So there's two different kinds of emotions. There's our regular emotions, which in our bodies, we feel emotions as vibrations in our body. So think about fear, for example. So if you're walking down the street and there's some weirdo who's following you, immediately your body like feels fear, right? Fear goes through our body and it sends messages to our brain that says, you need to run, you need to go get help immediately. We've got some, we've got some adrenaline that kicks in, our, our senses are heightened and we go and we get help. Um, think about like embarrassment. Um, it is amazing when you think about our brain, we can have a thought and we have an immediate reaction. Like we immediately start sweating or our heart starts beating. Like our brain, our thoughts trigger like dopamine will, will be, um, or we'll have like cortisol or some, some sort of hormone is triggered by thoughts. Isn't that amazing? So feelings actually really help us. They help us survive. They help us to live our best life. But there's an other type of feeling and it, they're called the indulgent emotions. And indulgent emotions, I call them like band-aid emotions. They cover up what's really going on. So anger is an indulgent emotion, confusion, overwhelm, um, and worry. Because let's think about it. So if you are in worry, you're like, oh, I'm so worried. Oh, I'm so worried. So do, does worry actually propel you to do anything? Not so much. What about anger? What's really going on when you say, I'm so angry with these kids or I'm so angry with this government. It's like, what are you actually? You're actually disappointed. You're actually frustrated. Are you um, sad? Are you, are you like, um, what, what, like, what's really actually going on? That's why I call it a band-aid emotion. So even like confused, you're like, oh, I'm just so confused. Weight loss is just so confusing. Oh, man, I should just go and not worry about it, right? So these indulgent emotions and like overwhelmed. So when we went over our list, we have, there's lots of shopping. There's lots of cooking and cleaning. There's disruption of routine. There's so much to do. We have time limits. We have money issues, making gifts, loneliness, noise, confusion, all of these things can lead us to feeling really overwhelmed. And we're like, oh, I'm just so overwhelmed. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know where to start. Rather than have something like this. I'm gonna use the black pen, Colleen. Oh, by the way, isn't this fun? Look who just got a new planner. It's so beautiful. I'm so excited. It's from Costco. And Costco wasn't too bad. I was there yesterday. So this, when we feel overwhelmed, Instead, we could do like, oh, there's so much shopping. So we make a list and then we um, plan shopping and then we go shopping and then we plan time to wrap and then we stick to our plan and then we wrap in that timeline, right? So instead of like, oh, there's so much shopping to do. It's like, actually, I make a list and these are all the people I'm gonna shop for. And then this is how much time I'm, it's gonna take me to do all that shopping. And then I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna stick to my list and I'm just gonna do my job, my shopping job. And then I'm gonna make a plan and then I'm going to wrap all those things and then it will be done. And then I don't have to be overwhelmed because I have a list and I break it down. Same thing here, cooking. It's like, oh, I know. This is all the cooking I'm going to do. This is when I'm gonna do the cooking. This is when I'm gonna buy the food for the cooking. And so you execute your plan. Now I'm gonna give you a little hack here. This is really fun. Did you know that you could make a cake in two minutes? 
this is how you do it. You get your phone, you phone a bakery, and you say, I would like to order a cake and I'd like it to be done by this date. You can make a cake in two minutes. And then you can even have somebody else pick it up. Isn't that amazing? So same thing here. Do you know that you can have people wrap your gifts? I did that. One year we were renovating our kitchen, actually our whole house. And it was like, it was very overwhelming and it felt very, um, it was very disruptive. You know, if you don't have a kitchen and the flooring was being put in, it was, and then we had like trades people all over and not knowing with this or that. So I literally called in two friends and said, I need your help. I like, and so in one hour we wrapped everything and I have five children and I love wrapping presents. I love having them open lots of presents. So they get like lots of, everyone gets like nine presents. Some of them are like, you know, some chocolate bars or something, but everyone gets to open because it's like my favorite thing. <laughs> and we just like wrap presents in like one hour done. So when we, when we have lists like this, so cooking, same thing, cleaning, we could hire people to clean. We can plan in half an hour every day if we need to, to break it down, whatever that is. We are totally 100% responsible and in charge of how we want it to look. Um, disrupting routine. It's like, okay, I can plan for that, Colleen. If you know it's going to be disrupted, you're like, oh yeah, this is the part where I'm going to feel a little bit awkward because my routine is a little bit. Uh, but do I like my reasons for having a disrupted routine? Right? So you can see how you can just start making sense of what's going on. This one here, so much to do. So if you have a thought like there's so much to do, you ask yourself, what? What is there so much to do? You answer, like you ask the question, then you answer it. And this is also is um, one of the things I, I help my clients a lot with is creating appropriate boundaries. So when we can decide like, this is what I'm going to do for Christmas. And then you make that decision and then you have to follow through. So chapter eight in my program, we talk a lot about perfectionism, people pleasing and procrastination, the triple P's. Now, one of the problems that we can have is, and we, I'm going to just talk about this is um, when we want to feel better from somebody else. So getting other people's approval that's what causes us a lot of trouble. That's called people pleasing. So we're giving power to other people to make us feel better. And so that feels really overwhelming. That feels like, oh, if I don't do this right, if I don't, you know, do the right food or have the right gifts or all of that, then everything is terrible because then I am not a good human, right? So this is where we just start getting really curious and really start seeing what's going on for us because we ultimately get to decide if we have a good Christmas. It makes no difference if people didn't like the gift we gave them, if people didn't like our cooking or if our house wasn't clean enough. Those things are all circumstances. We always get to decide how we want to think about what we did. Okay. All right. So how much time do you spend in feeling overwhelmed? Now think about what's just been going on this year. We've actually had a pandemic <laughs> and it's not stopping. It's blowing my mind. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is like crazy. It's like the song that never ends, right? Remember the little sheep song? This is the song that never ends. It's like COVID. I'm like, what? What's happening here, right? It's not ending. And we're like, oh. Okay, well, it's a circumstance. We get to decide how we want to think about it. But, in, but, in, but I spent a lot of times, a lot of people are spending a lot of time going, I don't know what to do. I don't know if we're going to be able to go on vacation. I don't know what's happening. This seems so crazy. The schools are going to, like, are they going to shut down? Are they not? And so then you can feel overwhelmed. You're like, you know what? We can actually just make a decision. No matter what, I'm, I'm just always going to take care of me. So they can shut down schools. I can have a plan. They can do this. I can have a plan but I'm always in charge of how I feel. It's so much better and it's so much more fun that way. Okay. So what exactly do you feel overwhelmed about? So we went through that. 
And if there's other ones that are more um, specific to you, uh, so like write them down and just really start getting um, really clear about that. So even if this idea of, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to spend time with family and friends, like that feels very, that can feel very overwhelming because of pretty much all of our life, well, I know for me, all of my life, Christmas has basically been like have as many people over, cook for as many people as possible, have all the parties. <laughs> I love it. We have a sushi party on the 23rd. We have a Christmas Eve on the 24th. I do a turkey dinner and, and we invite like 50 people to the 23rd and the 24th. Like, and I'm like in heaven. I love it. This year, it's not happening. So we made a decision. We're going surfing. And we booked a really fun place and we're going to go celebrate with the kids and we were going to get home on the 24th, just in time for Christmas Eve, just in time for me to put the beef dip on, right? Because I am always in charge of me. I always get to decide how I want to feel. And that's extremely empowering. Okay. So if I could show you how not to be overwhelmed anymore, what would you do with that gift of time? Okay, so this is my gift to you. So what, if you were to think about how much time you spend in feeling overwhelmed, how much time do you think it would be during the day? And you don't have to say it on the q and I just want you to kind of think about it for yourself. Now, I want you also to think, so like if we had the model, so let's go, the model is, so most of you know my work already. The, the model is we have a circumstance. So the circumstance is Christmas. And the feeling is overwhelmed. Okay. And the thought is, let's just take the first one. I think the first one was there's so much to do. Okay. So. For all of you, what are the action lines? Okay, I'm gonna have you help me. This is, you have to do the work. So when we're looking at this model, so Christmas is a circumstance, the thought is there's so much to do, and then you feel overwhelmed. When you are feeling overwhelmed, what are your action lines? What are you doing in the action line? Okay, you gotta tell me. I know you know it. Do you make lots of lists? You procrastinate, you make a list. So you make a list. How do you procrastinate? And by the way, procrastinating can sometimes feel really purposeful. Like it could be like, oh, I've got to go. I got to go check this thing out. I got to check this thing out. And I got to research this. Remember to put all our comments in the Q&A because I can't see the chat. Uh, social media buffering, plan to sleep less. Okay, social media buffering, right. Um, Diana, you hit that on the head, sleep less. And isn't that funny that we do that? And I am like the queen of that. We, we plan to sleep less, but what happens when we sleep less? Our efficiency goes downhill. We are working at half speed. We're working at half capacity. We're like doing things, but we're not really doing it. Like I remember when I used to quilt for hire and people would be bringing their quilts in the last minute and I was such a people pleaser. And I'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll quilt that for you. And I literally would be falling asleep as I was quilting. I still have a quilt for my son that I quilted on the 23rd. Um, I, it still didn't have a binding. And that was like four years ago. <laughs> There is still no binding. I did wrap up the quilt and I did give it to him, but there's, yeah, I just laugh. I just laugh at myself. But <clears throat> so we think, oh, we'll just sleep less. What else do we do? I start early and make many lists for different types of tasks, right? And how do, well do we do when we're feeling overwhelmed? We make the list to make a list to make a list. But how, how good are we at actually completing the list? And then do we add more things to the list? Do we honor the list? Or do we say, oh, I need to do more? Or do we learn how to constrain, right? 
so good. Um, we end up with so many lists, right? And then we just get even more overwhelmed. And then it's like, it's just too much. And we, and we literally shut down. So the interesting thing is, so we make a list, we procrastinate, we social media buffer because we need a little bit of dopamine because we're not giving ourselves a dopamine because we're over feeling so overwhelmed and so overworked and so over like taxed in our brain. Um, so then we plan to sleep less. So then what are the results of this? There's so much to do. What is the result? Get online. Yeah, that's right. Research. I love that. I'm going to put that one in there. And then we go down rabbit holes. Oh, that's another one. I think, oh, I should, um, I should go see that about this thing. And I should go see that about that thing. And the next thing we know we're on Pinterest and then we're, then we get, oh, distracted, getting less done. Nothing is done. Right. Nothing gets done. Uh, distracted. We have all sorts of like good intentions, right? So the result is there's so much to do and nothing gets done. And it's so interesting because look at this list. We actually are doing things, but we're doing research, which doesn't help us get all the things that we want. We sleep less, so we're not working at full capacity. We are on doing a lot of social media buffering. Uh, so if we're on social media, we're not actually getting the work done that we need to. Um, we procrastinate by doing those things. Uh, you're the queen of rabbit holes. I love it. You and uh, Alice Wonderland. Um, we go do the rabbit hole thing. And uh, so it's kind of like when I used to clean the house and I would be like, okay, I'm going to clean this closet. And so I pull everything out of the closet and then I go and it reminds me of this thing. And then I go do that thing. And then I go do this thing and I do that thing. And so then I have like little bits done in the house that are kind of clean, but the closet is still a disaster. And so by the end, I'd have to put everything back in the closet and I never actually got the closet cleaned. <laughs> Can anyone else relate to that? Um, and then we get, yeah. So this is the model and this just keeps going around and around and around. Okay, so we've established that, good. So let me ask you such a fun question. What do you think is the worst emotion you could feel? And I actually would love you to write this down. I would love you to write down, <coughs> excuse me. What do you think is the worst emotion you could feel? What do you think? Grief, fear, powerless, anger. Okay, so why is that the worst emotion? Why is grief and fear and powerlessness and anger, why is that the worst, do you think? Because how do you feel? Oh, guilt, loneliness, hate. Yeah. Inadequate. Absolutely. Hate. Okay. Loneliness. Yeah. So why are those, those emotions really scary? I really want you to think about that. Helpless. Okay. So because, so when you think about the worst emotion you could feel, I want you to think about why it's so terrible. And I want you to just kind of imagine, you don't have to go there if you're not comfortable, but just like, how does that feel in your body? What does hate feel like in your body? What does helpless feel like in your body? What does inadequate feel like in your body? Okay. And just start like thinking about that. So Brene Brown, she talks about, um, she's like the queen of, she is the queen of um, setting about shame. Okay. And, uh, oh, first of all, I wanted to just say that when we can articulate emotions, loss of control when feeling these emotions, right? We don't have a very high emotional IQ. We haven't really been taught. In fact, we've basically been taught that if you're feeling a negative emotion, you should have a sucker, which then can be like a donut. 
and also kind of translate into shopping or doing other things that make us feel better. Okay. So don't feel bad and don't, um, you know, get angry with your parents. They didn't have all the resources that we have now. And so, and even now, like we have all these resources and we still aren't as equipped with emotional, um, intelligence. Like we really don't, we don't really have a, as good of an understanding of like emotions in our body. We don't really understand that emotions are really actually very helpful. They're just vibrations. They help us know things. Okay. So we just don't have that. So, um, one of my jobs is to help people understand about their emotions and what's really going on. I help people start to think about their thinking. So when we can start thinking about our thinking, then we can, and because um, everything we do is because our thinking causes our, our feelings and everything we do is because we want to feel a certain way. So if we can realize what we're feeling and then what thought that brought, then we can actually change the way we're thinking to create the results that we really want in our life. So it's, an actually, it's a pretty amazing thing. So when we can start articulating our emotions, that's called an emotional accountability. And we can actually say, oh, this is what I'm feeling. I'm the creator of the emotions that I can create in my life because our thoughts create our emotions. It's amazing. Now, we have a lot of different thoughts, like 60 to 90,000 thoughts a day. And they, we can either, and I talked about this last week, we can either notice the thought and be like, oh, I notice you, but bye, I don't want you. Or we can believe that thought. And if we believe that thought, then we have an emotional reaction to that. And then from our emotions, we do certain things. So just like we had a thought, like there's so much to do. And when we had that thought, we felt overwhelmed. And when we felt overwhelmed, oh, we did all of these actions. So you see how we actually are always in charge of how we feel because we always get to decide what our thoughts are. If we either, either believe that thought or we notice it and we say bye-bye. Right? It's so incredible. Like, it's so incredible. I want to shout it from the rooftops to everybody. It's like, you don't have to believe what people say. You don't have to believe the thoughts you're having. You, you can just notice them and say, yeah, that doesn't serve me. Bye-bye. Right? It's incredible. It's so empowering. Okay. So, um, what we have, um, so Jody uh, Moore, she's a life coach and I really love her. I belong to her program. And she talks about emotional junk mail. And so we're getting a lot of mail these days, right? We're getting a lot of flyers and we're getting hopefully some Christmas cards from people. So there's three different kinds of mail that we get. One is we get the nice to get cards, right? So like we get cards from people and those are really lovely and we want to like read them and cherish them and spend time with them. And then there's the necessary mail. So the bills, right? We get lots of those. And those are like necessary. So there's like necessary thoughts, like you need to brush your teeth and you need to like be kind to people. Um, like we have thoughts that keep our society like more happy and growing and those kinds of things. And we wanna, we want those necessary thoughts. They, they keep us safe. And then there's the junk mail, okay? And those are usually like, so we want to trash those because they're not necessary. So this is where we're going with the um, guilt and the shame. So how many thoughts do we have that make us feel guilty and shame? Because just like I asked you, like, what is the worst emotion? Most, a lot of the time we are trying to avoid different emotions. Okay. So when I used to take piano lessons, whoever took, who took piano lessons here? You can say in the Q and A, you took piano lessons. So I was so afraid of who took them. Oh, Lori did, Julie did. Oh yeah, Julie, you have an organ, don't you? So cool. So I was really afraid and Lisa did too. I was really afraid of sharps. And I could only do two flats at a time. And I was scared of scales. Like I really was. I really felt like they felt really overwhelming. They felt very daunting. They felt really complicated. Oh, that's awesome. And so 
when I would, I did Royal Conservatory, very traditional piano lessons. And I literally picked the songs that had either one or two flats. There was only one song that I played that had more. They had three flats. I could handle one flat. I mean, sorry, one sharp. That was it. Like it was just too much. And I limited myself so much from not giving myself the opportunity to really embrace scales and really like learn them and train my fingers and all of that. And I have a regret of that. And it's the same thing we do with emotions and especially when it comes to guilt and shame. We spend a lot of time trying to avoid situations because we don't understand, I don't really know how to deal with guilt and shame. Okay. Who can hear me on this? You're like, do I get an amen or what? Like who can really relate to this? So the problem is, so Brene Brown, so she's the top researcher on shame. She says that we feel shame because we feel that we aren't good enough or that something is wrong with us or we don't feel worthy or complete. So if I was to say, yeah, amen, sister, I wish we could like high five. So if I was to say the one, the, like the, the motion that I fear the most is the not good enough because I have this and I, I want all of you to really think about this. A lot of what's going on for us, even though we're like older, is we have these childhood memories that have really like, somehow they, they, they're really strong in our head and so the story that we tell just gets stronger and stronger. And then remember a thought, a belief is just a practice thought. It's a thought that we've just had enough times. So I have a very strong memory and it seems like I have a lot of evidence of this because it was, it seemed very scary and it seemed very real to me of my mom who, you know, now that I'm a mother, a lot of you are mothers on here. We just want the best for our kids. We want them to be like good, you know, humans that, that contribute to society. And it was very important for my mom to have a clean house. It was very, very important. Like she had six kids, she had five kids in six years, and she would stay up till the wee hours of the night to clean the house because she could not go to bed with a messy house. She just couldn't do it. And it made her crazy. Anyways, I have a lot of memories of me being this seven, seven year old girl eight-year-old girl, nine-year-old girl, 10-year-old girl. And she's saying, it's not good enough. It's not good enough. You need to do that again. You need to clean your room again. You need to clean that bathroom again. And so when she was saying that, like the job you did wasn't good enough, I internalized that as I wasn't good enough. And so that's why I'm the recovering uh, like hustler for like, I've been hustling for love and attention since I was like seven years old, since I can remember really. And so I internalized like the job you did wasn't good enough as I'm not good enough. So I have been on this treadmill of trying to please for so many years. Luckily, I discovered life coaching, thinking about my thinking, realizing that my thoughts is what causes my feelings and my feelings uh, are caused my actions and my actions give me my results. So my thoughts always give me my results. So if I want different results, then I just have to be aware of my thoughts and realize what's going on and then I can create the results that I really want. It's amazing. <laughs> like amazing. So this is what my challenge is for you ladies. If we can allow ourselves to be guilt and shame free for just like a month, what's going to happen is that we're actually going to really see it's like taking the lid off of something. And then we can actually see what's really going on. So that's so it's been so liberating for me to really look at, oh, what's, what's going on here? Like when my mom was saying, it's like the job's not good enough. What she was doing is she was just wanting me to be a really good cleaner because cleanliness was ne is next to godliness for her. And for her to be a good mom, she needed to know that she taught her kids to work. So it made, had nothing actually to do with me not being good enough. It was just that there was a standard and this is what we did. And this was her job and she took it very seriously. And this is just how it was. 
So she actually really loves me and she just wants the best for me. But if I was feeling all the guilt, like I'm not good enough and shame, like what's wrong with me, I must be broken. I couldn't see that. I was blinded by that. So how does that feel to you? How does that feel that you could actually just decide that you can be guilt and shame free? Now, I want to tell you, I know how to process guilt and I know how to process shame. And in fact, I'm so good at processing shame now that when I feel shame, it's like, oh, here's shame. And it literally goes through my body like a lightning bolt. It like, it's like a streak. It's just like hot. And it just comes into my body. And then it just like comes all the way back out. And I'm like, whoo, there was shame. Woo. It's like, um, you know, Ghostbusters or whatever, when the, the ghost would like go into their body. It's like, it's in and then it's out. It's like, that's what shame is like for me. It's like, oh my gosh, I just felt some shame. Whoa, that was crazy. But I just let it be there. I didn't resist it or avoid it. All right, I really want to hear what's going on for you. So when you think about shame or guilt and have any of you experienced shame, like how often do you allow shame to be or how often do you resist or avoid it? Like, I actually, not until this past year, um, did I even realize I was experiencing shame because I didn't even allow myself to be open to the fact that I could be someone that could have shame. It was, it's a totally different experience. If you have questions about, it, um, if you're in my group or you're one of my own clients, bring it to the group. If you're not, you can always like plan, a, like we could plan a consult and you could talk to me about that and how if you are finding that that's something that you really struggle with, then I can help you with that, okay? So one of the things about this is we don't, it doesn't, so I like how Jody explained it. Just like, we can just be open to just understanding it. So it's like, we can just, it can be as simple as just changing my hair color. So she said, we don't, um, so let, okay, that's, that, that's that. So let's say you dyed your hair brown and you usually are blonde and people say oh you changed your hair color you wouldn't go and so this is you you can choose to decide this you're like oh my gosh that's terrible they're just making this comment about my hair or you're just like yeah change my hair color so it's interesting because like if someone says oh it looks like you've gained some weight which we tend we generally don't in our society um but uh, people could make comments or hey, it looks like you've done something. And there's certain things that we can feel that trigger us to feel shame or guilt. And the problem is if we avoid or resist that shame or guilt, we don't have the opportunity to really see what's going on. So even for us with weight loss, if we're like 50 pounds or 80 pounds heavier, and we just are like, oh, I can't even talk about it. It's so embarrassing. I feel so bad. And we can't even like bring it into ourselves. If we, if we have like a lot of shopping addiction or if like over buying a fabric or over social media, right. And if we aren't able to even just look at it and to be honest and just be like, yeah, I've got a bit of a problem with over shopping or over social media or overeating. If we can just take the shame and the guilt out of that, Think about what a different conversation you're going to have with yourself. You're going to be like, yeah, what's that all about? Why am I keep spending all this money on fabric that I don't need? Clearly, I don't need more fabric. And if you can just like take away the shame and the guilt, what a different conversation you're going to have with yourself. And this is what I get to do for my clients. That's why they're getting the success that they're having. It's so beautiful. Because then they can really see like, yeah, what is going on? Okay, so who's who's with me? Who's willing to do this? All right, so on this on this page, we're gonna have a guilt-free pledge. Okay, so I solemnly swear I'm not gonna let guilt be a part of my life because I want to take the lid off and I want to see what's really going on. Right? That's what we're gonna do. So I made this little chart for you. So date of notice guilt or shame. Okay, either one. So, oh, December 1st, husband said, so what was the thought? You, you spent how much on that gift? Maybe that was the, right? 
and then what's really happening. So this is going to open your eyes to see what's really going on. Okay. And then on the third page, um, so I say, congratulations, you are spending time on changing the way that you are thinking. This is how we can achieve long lasting change. Here are some questions to help you commit to creating the version of you who is peaceful. So remember, I promised you peace on earth. So write down one thing you did today that felt peaceful. So even you coming to this webinar, you're like, you know what? I did something for myself. That was really kind. Does that feel peaceful that you're like, I'm doing something? Or even like printing off these sheets and even sitting down with them. Does that feel peaceful? Does that feel like oh, I'm taking care of me? It feels really nice. Or maybe um, when someone made a kind of a mean comment and you just decided to just not just be like, oh, they must be having a hard day. Okay, so I just write. So when your brain is looking for evidence of something, it's going to find it. And it's going to find that you can find peaceful. Okay. Describe how peaceful feels in your body. So awesome. Just but like, let it be in your body. For some, for some people, it's actually really hard to feel a positive emotion. Because the problem is, if we're not allowing our emotions, and we're spending a lot of time buffering, that means we can't have the positive or the negative emotions. So to have a positive emotion, you're like, oh, this feels really weird. This is uncomfortable. I'm not used to this. Okay. How many times do you want to feel peaceful tomorrow? So you can actually make a decision to feel peaceful and then to like plan for it. Isn't that amazing? It's so true. Uh, what actions are you going to take to create these peaceful moments? So how about, so I'll share one with you. We, I made 25 bags, fabric bags, and they have the numbers on them. And I have Christmas books. I've been collecting Christmas books at thrift stores, at regular stores. I used to be a teacher, so Scholastic, they always had Christmas book specials and things. So I have books in every one of those bags. And sometimes those bags have two books. Most of them have two now because I've collected a lot of books. And I sit with my kids and we read the Christmas stories every year, the same ones. And some of them are so cheesy. They're so cheesy, like Froggy's First Christmas. And um, anyway, they're, but they're like, they're part of our tradition. And it just feels really calm. And it feels really peaceful. And it's something that I can do. And I bet you when my kids all leave, guess who's still going to do that? This girl. I'll probably be like FaceTiming. By then, maybe we'll like be able to transport. And I could just like transfer it myself to my grandkids and I'll read them to you. I don't know. But this is what we get to decide, the kind of life that we want to have. We are the creator of that. So how did you do with your goal? So planning to feel peaceful or an emotion you want to feel on purpose is how you create a life you want to feel on purpose. Such good work. This is the best work you're going to do. Your brain is your best investment. So does anyone have any questions for me? always want to hear them. Does anyone have, so I can open it up if you want uh, coaching. If anyone wants coaching, I'm happy to coach you. Um, if you want the coaching, you just have to put your hand up along um, the, uh, beside your name. It's on along the bottom. So if you want that, um, oh, that's so amazing. I'm so glad, Lisa. Okay, so I do have, I want to show you something. I'm going to share my screen. And um, so I have a really amazing program. I'm really proud of it. And I'm really proud that I have these incredible women that are in this program with me. I'm also extremely proud of my one-on-one -on -one clients. I am, every morning when I wake up and every night before I go to bed, I am just in awe of what I have created for myself. I am in awe of what I have done for me 
and for my own life and created for my family and what I'm helping create for my clients. Like it's amazing to me. Like Ashley's on here. I was just writing my emails for my next launch and I actually quoted uh, you. I didn't say your name, but how you, um, your husband lost his job and you didn't, you didn't go off your protocol and you just allow the emotions. And I want everyone to know that they can do that. And I'm like so pleased that, that this is happening for you. And so many of my clients on here are, are having those kinds of results. Um, and so I'm thrilled about what I get to do. And after having the experience of coaching women and going through the training and all the, the time that I have spent, I mean, I've only been able, I've only been doing this for a year and it's incredible to me over a year and a half, uh, over a year now, um, the, re, the, the kinds of things we can do with our lives, like by changing, by thinking what our thinking. So I have three main focuses to my program. Weight loss science is simple. Emotions are the key to the universe and creating a future of whom you love being. So for example, when I asked you in this webinar, what is the worst feeling? What is the scariest worst feeling? And you, you, uh, a lot of you shared that feeling. What, when we think about that worst feeling, it literally is just a vibration in our body. So the more willing you are to feel all the feelings, the more success you're going to have. That has been something I have said to myself every single day since I learned about coaching, learned about thinking about our thinking. The more willing we are to feel any feeling and just being like, yep, yeah, bring it on, the more success we're going to have. Because we know the worst thing that could happen is what? We have a negative emotion. And we understand that emotions are just vibrations in our body. They're like, oh, wait a minute, human. You're having, you're, you can have some frustration. You can have some disappointment. You can have some, whatever it is. Remember back to my training on um, learning how to fail. Failing is literally just having an expectation that you created. And then you didn't meet that expectation in the timeline that you, you, you made it. That's, that's what it is. So if you're like, oh my goodness, it's not that big of a deal to fail. So interesting. Lisa's on here and Lisa is a professional quilter. And, um, you know, she, she could, the worst thing that could happen is, well, she could maybe like rip a quilt when the machine is running, or she could have a customer that says, I don't like it. Guess what? I've had a customer come and say, she didn't like what I did. Guess what I was able to do? Feel the emotion and I worked it through and I'm here, I'm still alive, right? Because we are just humans having this experience. Okay, so in my program, um, I help you really understand about why diets don't work. I help you understand what the role of food is. I actually help you understand what's going on in our brain and how we're wired. I'm doing a bunch of free trainings. Oh my gosh, you know, all know how much I love all these free trainings. Um, as part of, in January, that's like leading up to my, my next launch in my group. And really, it's amazing to understand but what's going on in our brain. So those in my group know it, and those in my one-on-one, my -on -one, they understand this. And this changes our lives because we're like, what? This is what's going on? I'm wired this way? So we learn about mindset. It's learning to think about our thinking. And the most important relationship we have is with ourselves. So how much time are you spending with yourself? How much time are you spending thinking about your thinking? How much time are you investing in learning about what it's like to be you? And then creating the version of you whom you really love. Because now you're aware of like, oh, like going back to this example, at Christmas, sometimes I have this thought, there's so much to do. And when I have that thought, I feel overwhelmed. And when I feel overwhelmed, oh, look 
what I do. I get distracted. I make lists and then I make more lists. And then I go down a rabbit hole and then I procrastinate and then I do social media buffering and then I sleep less or plan to sleep less. And then I do a bunch of research. Oh, and so when that happens, I actually end up getting nothing done. Oh, that's so interesting. I don't want to do that anymore. I want to change that in how I show up. Oh, so I'm going to understand now that when I have that thought, I don't have the feeling that's going to give me those that's propelling me to the actions that are actually going to get me the results I want. Because what I really want is I want to have a lot of fun. I want to love Christmas. I want to give everyone the gifts. I want to have all the food. I want to have the clean house and I don't want to be exhausted. Okay. So that means I'm going to plan. That means I'm going to stick to my plan. I'm going to honor it. That means I'm going to do all those things. And then I can have the Christmas that I want to have, which is 100% available to you. But if we think things are happening to us and that we don't get to decide, then that's not going to happen. So, um, so within my program, I have four main components to the weight loss science is simple. I have four main components to emotions are the key to the universe. It's so much fun. We just finished week six, right, Ashley and Colleen. Um, I think Marlene is still here. And so, and Maury, I think she's here too. So we just were learning about the, um, the power of our thoughts, um, lower and higher brain emotions. So next week we're going into emotions 101. And then we're going to create the future us whom we love being, which is super fun. And I love that I'm teaching this right at Christmas, uh, right after Christmas. Okay. So in my program, you get the written lessons and worksheets for each module. The module is released every week and there's an interactive lesson with me. And uh, so I do that every Monday. And so that's a value of $2,000. And then you get all these bonuses. So every week on Wednesday, you get the coaching calls with me and then the group is there. And so it's super interactive. We have a private Facebook group where you get to interact with these ladies and support each other. Um, the Facebook group stays together. And then you get um, a one month, one week, one session a month of group co coaching with me. So that's a value of $14,000 and all you pay is 2000. It's so much fun. So um, these are the options of how you can get the results that you really want. So when you think about how to avoid the holiday overwhelm and having peace on earth, you can join. So my, I don't not necessarily join my existing group, but you can pay for the next group for 2021. So if you, even if you're in my group now, you're totally welcome to keep going. And I have a really fun bonus um, that's going to be added that you're not going to want to miss. And then um, you can become one of my exclusive one-on-one -on -one clients. So that is how you work with me. And I actually do have openings now for my one-on-one -on -one, and um, I'm filling those um, now. So if that's what something you're interested in, we can always, uh, make a date and we can get on the phone and talk about how we can work together. So does anyone have any questions? I'm super excited that you're all here. So fun. Oh, Darlene, you're here. Hello. You should see Darlene has been super busy making some very, very cool quilts for Christmas. I get sneak peeks of the process. It's super fun. All right. I love you all. I'm so excited you're here. I'm so pleased that on Thanksgiving, you were thankful to yourself and you made this yourself a priority. You made the knowing about how overwhelm to avoid this holiday holiday overwhelm and to have peace on earth i love that you did this for yourself this was such a wonderful gift i wish i could all give you a hug you're so awesome i love you all uh powerless doesn't solve the problem that's right um one of the one of the the key concepts that I teach is uh, this concept called emotional adulthood. And um, 
that's, that's what it's all about is like always being 100% responsible for yourself. All right. I love you all. I hope wish you all the best. Um, Thanksgiving. Um, oh, wait a minute. Okay. One last question here before I get off. Where can we get cost information on the next group and the one-on-one option? I'm very interested in continuing after the new year. Yeah. So if you want to just sign up for the next one already, you can, you can just pay. And um, if you want to talk about one-on-one, you can just hop onto a consult. And I actually have uh, two consult openings for tomorrow. So if you want to do that, Ashley, you can just DM me. All right. I love you all. Have an amazing Thanksgiving. Take care, everyone.